Okay, for those of you who asked, and for my kids, here it is. Preheat your oven to 350, and then go start chopping your garlic and your onions, if you're going to add them. Now, if you have finicky children like mine were, they may not like onion and garlic, so you can just leave those first two steps out if you wish. But um, I decided to, to uh, trick my children, and I started adding just a little bit of onion and a little bit of garlic at a time, and I chopped it up very, very good. The smaller it is, the less likely they'll notice it, but they will notice the flavor and just think it's yummy. So I just chop and chop and chop until I feel like I just can't chop anymore. And as you'll see, these pieces are very, very tiny. Next step is the eggs, and I like to use eggs from free roaming hens. And uh, I gotta tell you, one time my daughter and I were in the uh, grocery store in the produce section, and we weren't sure where the eggs were, so we asked the produce man, we said, do you have any free roaming eggs? And he was standing next to a cooler, and he, and he put his arms, he stretched his arms out and put it around the cooler. He said, no, I don't have any free roaming eggs. He said, I make all my eggs stay right here. <laughs> it was hilarious, and we laughed about that for quite some time. Oh uh, yeah, you just saw me sniff those eggs. I like to smell my eggs to make sure they're fresh before I add them to my meatloaf. So just beat them up really good, and then uh, take a pack of crackers, you know the kind I'm talking about, those kind that aren't very good for you, and just smash them up really, really good while they're in the package, and that way you don't have much of a mess, you know, because all the crumbs stay right inside of there. I like to get these really, really small, because when you get a big piece of cracker in your meatloaf, it just isn't good. So make them really, really tiny. Smush them good. Next is your tomato sauce. I don't have a special preference. I just normally buy whatever's on sale. You can use whatever kind you want. You just need one can. And about a, a pound to a pound and a half of lean ground beef. I like to use the lean stuff and there's less grease in there, you know. And it's better and healthier for you. And um, I use about a half a can of the tomato sauce in the burger. The cold burger. Make sure that burger's cold and A1 sauce, probably about two tablespoons. I just eyeball it. The same with what's this here sauce, about two tablespoons, I guess. Just, you know, sprinkle it over the top. But the trick is to a good meatloaf that melds together and holds together and doesn't fall apart is the meat must be cold. Yeah, and add some of this ketchup in here. Now, all these liquidy items, they're going to help your meatloaf hold together and your onions and your garlic. Put that in there if you're going to. And your free roaming eggs. And of course the crackers. And you pour the crackers in. Now you're going to mix this up. You're not going to mix too long. That's the key too. If you overwork the meatloaf, it's going to get warm from your hands and it will fall apart when you cut it. So. So a little bit of garlic powder and salt and pepper to taste. And if you're um, superstitious like I am, but have a bad memory and you spill the salt, I just pick a little up and throw a little over each shoulder because I can never remember which shoulder to throw it over. <laughs> so anyway, mix your meatloaf. And like I said, don't play around in there too long. Just... Uh, get it so that all the crackers are wet and mixed in there real good and then shape it up and put it in the pan just like patty cake hmm? okay when I'm shaping the uh, meatloaf into the pan I like to make a little well I press down with my hands to make a little well on the top of the meatloaf for later okay so now it's time to put your meatloaf in the oven and I like to cover a cookie sheet with aluminum foil that way if there's any grease splatters it'll make for easier cleanup later and less chance for a fire so um, we set our timer to 45 minutes and then we go on and prepare the rest of our meal while we're waiting for our meatloaf to cook and today we're gonna have Dolly's famous potato pancakes Okay, some yummy garlic and onions chopped, and Lowry's salt, and then we're going to put in 
and some Jane's Crazy Mixed Up Salt. I don't know if you can get this in your town, because when I first moved to Florida, I had to talk my grocer into ordering this for me. We have it in Ohio, but when seven years ago when I came to Florida, they didn't have it. But this is a, an essential ingredient for potato pancakes. And, of course, more garlic powder and salt and pepper to taste. And the key again, folks, is cold potatoes. Very cold. That holds them together when they're cooking and they won't fall apart on you, okay? But again, your potatoes must be very cold, so if you have leftover mashed potatoes from last night's meal, get them out and make some potato pancakes with them. Don't mess around in there too long, just like with the meatloaf. Hurry up and make your patties. And remember, the temperature of your oil is very important. And I like to use extra virgin olive oil, just like Rachel Ray. Got to have something healthy going on in this meal. And like I said, the temperature is very important. I try to cook mine at about medium heat, okay? So I just take a little bit of the potato, the cold potato, and I put it in the pan. And when that starts sizzling, I know that pan is ready for my potato pancake. And now when I start to see little crispy things growing around the outer part of the potato pancake, I know it's time to flip it. So be careful at this part that you don't um, get that hot oil on you because it will hurt. So just flip it over and looky there. Nice golden brown potato pancakes. I love them. They're so yummy. It's important to cook your potato pancakes in a Teflon pan, and my daughter only has a small Teflon pan, so um, I have to cook one at a time. And I like frozen corn or fresh corn. I don't really care for canned stuff, so I'm heating up some of that as well. Alright, now when your um, buzzer rings at 45 minutes, then take your uh, meatloaf out and pour the, the other half of that um, tomato sauce that you saved. Pour that over the top and cook it for another 15 minutes. And voila, we have home-cooked comfort food. Don't want to eat this very often because it really isn't that healthy for you. But it sure is good and it is comforting. Now watch how this stays together as I slice it and serve it on the plate. It's all because it was cold when I started. I'm starving. Let's go eat.